Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be discussing more about environmental biotechnology. So we'll continue from where we left in the previous video. So let's get started with this. So in this, we are going to discuss about parasitism. So parasitism comes into negative interactions and the reason why it comes into negative interaction is very clear because in this, the one organism is benefited where the other is harmed. In one of them gets benefited and other is harmed so there is a def there is definitely a negative interaction between the two and the organism that benefits is called a parasite and the organism that is harmed is called a host so I'll, we have some of the examples for you as well so don't worry if you don't get the point right so also there are two types of parasites which can be ectoparasites and endoparasites so ectoparasites are the ones which live on the external body surface and endoparasites are the ones which live in the body of the host. So these are simple, uh, this is simple, I guess, because ectoparasites are the one which live inside the body surface or inside the host and endoparasites are the one which live outside the body of the host. So the example that we need to discuss about parasitism is, so this is a picture which relates to the example as well. So a female wasp lay eggs on the tomato hornworm. So this is the hornworm and the female wasp lay eggs. As you can see the eggs here, white portion so like lay eggs on the tomato hornworm and eggs hatch young burrow into caterpillar body and actually eat the caterpillar alive and the adult wall was flies away so basically it lay eggs and these eggs hatch to form a caterpillar so these caterpillars are eaten alive by the adult wasp and they immediately fly away so the organism that is harmed here is the host host is the caterpillar and the organism which is the parasite here is the wasp which lay eggs on the tomato hornworm and these eggs hatch and the caterpillar are eaten alive by the wasps so this is the parasitism example so moving on with that it's talking about emensalism so we'll discuss entirely about emensalism in now so which is a basically ecological interaction in which an individual species harms without the obtaining benefit. So definitely amensalism is also one which comes under negative interactions. So in this, uh, one of them gets harmed and the other organism is neither benefited nor harmed. So it basically stays in a neutral state. So this type of symbiotic relationship is common but not considered as an important process structuring communities because they are accidental and do not benefit the species doing the harm. So definitely it comes under negative interaction cause it definitely causes the harm. And if any, any organism which causes harm comes under negative interactions. So some of the examples that I have for you for negative uh, for amensalism is algal blooms, black uh, walnut trees and elephants. So talking about algal blooms, which can lead to the death of many species of fish. So this is the picture here for you. So algal blooms can cause deaths of many fish, uh, species of the fish. However, the alga, algae do not benefit from the death of these individuals. So basically what happens is, so these are in the, the, this is the lake or this is the pond as you can see. Uh, so this is, a, so as you can see the green layer that is formed on the surface of the water, which is the algal. So which is the accumulation of algae and it leads to the formation of algal blooms. So these algae, so this is a magnified picture of it. So these green surface, so this green surface are definitely not healthy for the marine organisms that inhibit or that are present inside this pond. So due to the presence of algal blooms, these causes lack of oxygen to reach to the marine organisms and eventually they die. So the death of these marine organisms are caused due to presence of algal blooms, whereas algal blooms do not provide any sort of benefit to the ocean or river. So definitely amensalism is one more. So algal bloom is the is one organism which remains in the neutral state, which is neither harm nor benefited, whereas the marine organisms are in a state of harm. So are in a state of loss because they die. Also talking about black walnut trees we have, which secretes a chemical from its roots, which prevents the growth of neighboring trees. So these trees which are Prevent, are, which are prevented due to uh, secretion of chemicals are the ones which are at loss where the black walnut trees do not get any benefit out of the chemical right and another example is a simple example that we have which relates with this picture 
is the elephant stepping on ants or level brushing does not benefit the elephant but harms the ants and brush so definitely elephants uh, are pretty a big structure as you can see elephants are normally generally very big yeah so definitely as they step on some insects or any sort of ants so the ants are killed then and there definitely and so the ants are at a position with, who are at loss where the elephant definitely won't gain anything out of that so it's another example for I mean Salison. So done with this. So we have another term which is the coevolution. So talking about coevolution, when a long-term change takes place in two species because of their close interaction with one another, this change is called coevolution. So this is a simple example that we have for coevolution. There's a uh, picture that relates with the example as well. So this is basically in this, uh, this is a long term change in which two species interact with each other and this change in interaction is called coevolution. So example is the ant and acacia tree which relates with this picture. Uh, so the basically the ant protects the tree and the tree has special structures that make food for the ant. So basically both are benefited from each other and thus they live in interactions with each other and the change is the coevolution. So this is another example for you, which is the flower and pollinators. So the bees are pollinators and the flower is here. So the pollinators are attracted to the color, order or nectar. Whereas flower provides nectar and gets pollinated. Definitely this is another example for co-evolution. So moving on from here on. So let's just talk about ecosystem, what we have for ecosystem here. So it's a habitat in all the living organisms, living things live in it. And it provides food, water, shelter, space. And it consists of biotic as well as abiotic components, which is living as well as non-living components in an area and how they interact with each other. And under ecosystem, we have a study which is called ecology, which is basically a scientific study of the interactions that determines the distribution and abundance of organisms in an ecosystem. So moving on with this, uh, we have some of the important terms in the ecosystem so that we should go through before understanding in a broader sense. So what is ecosystem? So ecosystem consists of species. So basically uh, species are a group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of interbreeding. So these are keystone species. These can be keystone species. So how is it different from a normal species? So keystone species are species whose presence in the community exerts a significant influence on the structure of that community. So these are some different sort of species whose presence, whose presence matters a lot. So talking about another term, which is population. So population is basically a group of individuals of the same species. And next we have community, which is it is a it is also a group of individuals, but it consists of all the individuals with all sorts of species or all of the different species are included in a community. So moving on with this. So we have some more terms such as, as you can see, the ecosystem is defined properly here. So all the living organisms and biological community that share a region and their physical and chemical environment. So which can be pond, forest. So each of this, so there are numerous ecosystems that we have in our environment. So another uh, term that we can have in an ecosystem is the biome. So biome is what? It is a basically a large naturally occurring community of flora and fauna occupying a major habitat or a climatic region. So the biome can be a tropical rainforest or a tundra island or a grass grassland forest. All right. So biome consists of everything, all of plants and animals occupying a region, particular region. So next we have is this. So ecosystem consists of biosphere. So ecosystem represents a highly integrated and interacting zone of comprising of atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere. So what is a biosphere? So biosphere is nothing but a collection of many ecosystems. So as you can see ecosystems, so this is the biosphere. This is a proper diagram of the biosphere. So it consists of atmosphere, it consists of ecosystem, it consists of lithosphere, it consists of hydrosphere. So all of these consist under one, which is the biosphere. So here is a level up uh, chart for you for your understanding. So this is an individual and these individuals may reproduce to form similar individuals of the same species, which is known as the population. And then we have to upgrade to another community. So uh, another level, which is the community. So in the community, we have many other individuals of different species as well. 
so this is another uh, this is this is known as community and uh, above community we have the ecosystem which consists of the entire everything entire uh, populated region or a small region so and moving from ecosystem we have the biome which consists of every sort of flora and fauna things that are happening inside a ecosystem and under biome we have the biosphere which consists of everything that has been told all right so there we have another diagram for you so this is a simplifying diagram so that um that is basically a upper from uh, above to low diagram so basically it starts from biosphere and ends to the smallest part which is the molecules so biosphere is the part of the earth that contains all ecosystems so next we have the community uh, ecosystem which is the community of living and non living uh, surroundings then we have the community then we have the population then we have organisms and under organisms we have groups of cells and even from groups of cells there are small uh, small cells which is known as this uh, individual cells or unicellular cells in this we uh, it's shown as a nerve cell and under cells we have the smallest part that is the molecules of water and dna as it shown as it, as it shows the genetic material as well so this is the this video i try to give you a overview of all of the uh, systems and all of the terms that occurs in an ecosystem so i'll be describing about whole of the ecosystem in my next video so please stay uh, keep watching all the videos and i've already made another video the previous video which i made was the introduction of the subject so you may check it out and also i'll be making videos very regularly so stay tuned and thank you for watching my video